happy Thursday. I'll let your video and then we can all change if you want to. Oh, perfect. Hi, everybody. I missed you on Tuesday. Uh, Courtney, Margie, and Christy. Awesome. Perfect. The OGs. Um, how's everybody doing? Let's start with a little convo. Gretch, if you want to unmute and if anyone wants to speak up or share anything in the chat. And because I love it. Like, I genuinely right. love this class. I love showing up with all of you and, and I get so much out of it and I hope you guys do too. So it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. And I think, you know, and, and um, I feel like I talk about him all the time. So sorry. But when my dad, after my dad passed, I, I um, is when I launched this, this business, mm. I decided to take it more from a, just a personal practice. And then, and then like with a few friends or people in my women's group or whatever, and then kind of expand it out and just see like, does anyone else need this, you know, type of thing. And uh, so that first year, um, you know, I was kind of coming out of the heavy part of grief, but there was still stuff going on and then things going on with my family, just, you know, helping my mom and, you know, you know, life happens and you've got to kind of roll with it, but, but it also goes on. So you have to keep showing up kind of like what we're in now. And I had this one client, this beautiful man who um, was in New Orleans. So we were, we had a remote uh, uh, relationship anyway, uh, as my client. Um, but we talked, uh, every week for a year and he was with me the whole time. And I recorded meditations for him and we did, you know, I gave him like, uh, homework assignments and we worked through these books that I thought would help him. So it was a really beautiful exchange and I'll never forget. I had one day where I just was like completely out of it and I couldn't rally. And, you know, as performers or people that love theater, you know, the show must go on, right? You leave shit at the door <laughs> yep. and you like show up, you know, and that's also being a grown up and that's going to work. Like, that's just what you do. You can't be the little drama, you know, silly kid that you were and go to high school and you just cry about everything all day. Like you can, but you know what I'm saying? Like you got to separate it. You got to show up and be professional and, and hold space, especially when you're in an industry like this, where it's really about, you know, holding space for the other person and providing mm -hmm. care and service and support for the other person. Like you really, and that to me has actually been a beautiful gift of, and service in general. Like if anyone's in a 12 step program, you know, they have people focus on service because nothing gets you out of your head and your baloney faster, right? Mm -hmm. Than making it not about you. And it's such a gift. Um, but anyway, there was one day and I could not shake it. And I ended up like, I didn't, I didn't put anything on him, but he could tell there was something different, you know, in my voice. And, and he's like, are you okay? And I was like, you don't have to worry about me. <laughs> so, ah. and, but I had been with him for so long that I felt like we could, I could just honestly share where I was at without it being like this dramatic thing. And he said to me, he said, Miracle, I just need you to know that, cause he's a teacher as well. And he said, for, he said, in my experience, showing up is everything and showing up however you are is okay sometimes because what you're doing is if you show up not perfect, right? If you show up a little human, you're giving the other people permission to do the same. Mm. And he said, so showing up vulnerable, showing up, you know, a little off, he goes, it's okay. Because then it's, then it's like this, this veneer is gone and, and it just creates an even uh, greater opportunity for presence and vulnerability and maybe some more honesty, like a deeper dive, you know. I would think something. like even more connection too, maybe to. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think, Oh, we lost Margie. I think it's um, a slippery slope, right? Because this is, um, is anyone familiar with Brene Brown and any of her work? Yes. yes. Okay. She's, 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 uh, she's the best. <laughs> she's a, a revolutionary as far as I'm concerned. And, um, you know, she talks about, um, she has a, like a phrase for it and I, I can't remember, but it's basically like, it's very easy to find those friends or the circle or maybe like a partner where you kind of just bitch together mm. and like that's where you bond like it's very easy to to sink down into like the lowest common denominator to connect because right. people are so desperate for connection right mm. so it's it's very easy to just be like okay i'm going to meet you there instead of right. being the one to keep continue to rise above it or like be the optimist or find the gift in this challenge or, you know, and like elevate the conversation. Um, so I think that that can be tricky where, yeah, you show up real, you show up maybe not on your best day, but then, you know, being mindful that it doesn't slip into just a want-wah fest, you know, because, so true. because I think there's value in, yeah, having a really real moment and talking about some hard stuff, but you, you can't live there. 
right? Mm -hmm. And gratitude helps pull us out of that. Perspective helps pull us out of that. Um, and sometimes we have to be, we have to be the light in the darkness when we don't find it anywhere else. We have to do that and shine our light to, to kind of expand that. So I feel like uh, what I wanna share based on what Gretchen said um, can kind of apply to where everybody's at because it, it is this, um, you know, I think most of us were thinking we're gonna go back to normal or get into a new normal or um, this will be over. And I feel like there's no over. And, and maybe that's what we're all kind of slowly <laughs> processing is like, oh, okay, cool. You know, or it'll be like in two years, the vaccine will exist and we'll all have had access and things will even out and the hospitals won't be over. Like it's going to, if there isn't over, I think it's going to be a lot longer than maybe we would all prefer. Um, so now it's like, okay, well, well that considered, how do we keep living? within this new reality. And that is that is the gift and the struggle of being a human as adapt or die. I mean, those are your choices, right? Like you you roll with it or you roll over. Like that, that, that's pretty much it. Um, and so it's a real opportunity here for all of us to, to, to build that muscle of, okay, these are my limitations. This is my new reality. How do I, how do I deal with this? And I've had this thought for a while and I, I'm gonna share it now and this isn't what I meant to say, but I'll get to that. Um, you know, I had a thought the other day of, because a, a quite a few of my clients um, actually have uh, some uh, physical limitations. They have like pretty chronic health issues. And, and a very good friend of mine since I was a kid has, and one of my best friends has MS and I've watched that decline over the last 15 years. And, and it's so interesting. And, and the little kid in me, um, would be devastated when I would see people suffering or in pain or limited or, or special needs or anything, you know, and it would almost just, um, yeah, thank you, Courtney. I'll, I'll pull the chat up. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, let's have the chat open. I'll keep an eye on that. Thanks. Um, you know, and it would be almost like debilitating for me just to, to consider, oh my God, what are they going through? And why, why do they have to suffer? And why, why, why? And I would just spin out about the why, you know, and just not, Anyway, so that was like my issue I had to get over. But, but what's interesting to me is when you, when you are in the elderly community, because ageism is totally a thing in our country, right? Like <laughs> it just is. So when you become an older person, or if you are a person with, with special needs or physical limitations or chronic illness and you can't leave your home, you can't, you know, you're just automatically limited. Um, it must be really frustrating, you know? And I've had many conversations with my mom about this because I, I asked both my parents, even in their like 50s, how old do you feel? And they're like 19. <laughs> like most of us just don't feel much older than like 19. That's kind of like the sweet spot. And we keep expecting our body to like, Gretchen and I were actually talking about this privately before you guys hopped on of like, we ain't 20 no more. Like that is not our reality. And it's fine. And it's a gift that we get to keep getting older, right? Like that's also the truth is we're still here. But what's happening, I think the resistance we feel in this country, the, the frustration, the tantrums, the this and the that, it's because we have limitations placed on us. And most of us have been blessed, like beyond blessed to just kind of like live our lives. And it pretty much works out. You know, we all got something. We all got something that we battle or some kind of limitation or our history or maybe no money or class race. You know, there's, there's something going on for everybody and none of it's to be compared, which is always my point. You know, it's not to be compared. But for the most part, we could just kind of do our best and figure it out. And now people that are used to that have to like, they can't just go, they can't just go do it, right? We're being forced into mindfulness, actually. We're being forced to be intentional about when we leave our house. We can't just leave our house. <laughs> we have to like think before we leave our house. You know, we have to think before we make this call. We have to think about our business. We have to think about these lives that we're, that we're leading and are we happy with it and all that. Um, but I, but I, my, my hope and my wish is that because our, our perspective and our experience of the world, we are being forced to have that expanded to beyond what we knew and what we had experienced before. And my hope is that 
we actually come out of this with a new level of compassion and understanding for the senior community, for the special needs community, for the chronic illness community. Because I have a friend, she's, she's been couch ridden since she was 20 years old. Like we basically just joined her <laughs> and her way of living, you know, like how, you know, and, and looking around at our country, like, is it actually set up to support us, you know, and how do we feel about that? And then we can be active politically wherever we wish to put our energy, you know, it's, it's forcing people that like could give a shit about politics to be like, maybe it actually does matter what happens in this, you know, or my local community or what, like, so we're, we're, our minds are being forced open. And that is where the resistance is coming, right? It's a rubber band. We're like, no, you know, and everyone's trying to like snap back and like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to see it because it's hard and it's uncomfortable and it's new and all these things we've talked about. But, but I do think there's this, an opportunity for, for an understanding of like, when you get older, it's, you can do less and less and less than you, than you used to. I, where I was on Tuesday, I told Gretchen, we were, and I just told all of you, you know, we were moving my mom and I, I, my foot was broken. And I just like started being able to do uh, like 30 minute walks like a week ago. And so I went from like barely moving all year to like going up and down two flights of stairs for eight hours. And my body is like, I'm good, but I'm tired and my body's wrecked and my calves are tight, you know? So I'm just trying to stretch and breathe through it. But it's like, again, if I were 20, I probably wouldn't feel anything, you know? And that's it. And, and that's what getting older is, is these little things keep getting taken away. Or like my mom and I've had many battles where, and Nisha, I don't know if you, you know, how you and your mom are, you said you just saw her and, and, and it's like, you know, there's a certain point where you kind of have to help a little bit or the world changes in a way where it's like, I, I, like for me, I'm, I do a lot of it for my own sanity, to be honest with you. Like, I'd feel better if I could handle this for you. Or like, I have to like be a little bit of a nag. Like, could you go slow? Could you slow that down? Like, don't, don't take videos on your tablet going down the stairs. Like, please, you know, it's like, geez. So it's just this, it's a new way of thinking, but, but I get it because it, it happens like that these little changes in our body, these little changes in our mind, what we're capable of, what even certain foods, right? Like just random stuff, like used to be not a big deal. And now it is because we're, because again, we are meant to continually change and evolve and it's okay. And the resistance and the frustration, you know, is what makes it hard. We make it hard for ourselves. So anyway, I feel like that came out clumsy, but I just, I really hope that we, that we can, just find a way to be a little more understanding for people that have been living this way for a long time. This is new for us. It's not new for a lot of people, you know? And uh, so again, I just, it's like anything, it's an opportunity to just say, well, what, what can this teach me? How can I, how can I contribute to make the world a better place or at least my own little circle or my own happiness or something like that? Um, mm -hmm. All right, going back to Courtney's comment, definitely been thinking on the new reality and how do we continue to thrive and live as normal as possible, right? So, um, <clears throat> I think in having to navigate where we are and where we're going, acceptance is key. We've talked about that, right? Accept it and then move forward. Um, awareness, right? So like when Gretchen was uh, having her, her moment, when Christy was freaking out, you know, it's like, okay, take a breath, look around what's really going on. What's really going on? What is within my control? What is not? Okay. My breath is in my control. My thinking is in my control. You know, I can reach out. I can call somebody. I can hug myself. You know, my, my little four person team I work with, we said, okay, here's the new hug. You just go, hi. And then you like, hug yourself <laughs> and you close your eyes and think of them. And, you know, it's super cute. We're finding these ways and um, yeah, it's going to be tricky. And we don't, um, oh, my mom lives with me, but she likes to go to Walmart all the time. <laughs> Staying home because she's 75 is diabetes, high risk. Yeah. Yeah. And I get it, you know, and then, and, and that's the thing too, at a certain point, it's like, but it's, it's everyone's own life, you know, and we have to, there has to be a certain amount of autonomy here, but we also are affecting one another. And it's just, it's very gray. It feels very messy. <laughs> it feels very, very gray and very messy. Um, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I think, uh, I think we have to have a certain amount of 
faith, I guess. That word feels loaded to me sometimes. I've, I've made peace with it, but I know it can kind of be triggering for some people and, uh, or mean something different. <laughs> um, but I think, again, like we didn't have control anyway. All the things we thought we would do or could do, like that, none of that was guaranteed, you know? So we're just being snapped back into this reality of like, we didn't have control anyway. Nothing was guaranteed anyway. There was, we could have all been laid off from our jobs. We could have all like our, whoever owns the building we're renting could have gone bankrupt. We'd be homeless. Like things can happen, <laughs> you know, like they always could have happened. There could be, you know, an illness just in your neighborhood or someone gets struck down by something else or, you know, like, my God, it just, it was all an illusion anyway. And so now because we're being forced into mindfulness, we're being forced into intentional action. We have to just decide that it's an opportunity so look, you were laid off before the crisis, Misha just said. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, my God. And, and, and this is it. And I, but I do think it's, I do think it is one of the greatest gifts that we are all in this together. And I know that like same storm, different boat analogy has gone around the internet like a million times, but, but it's true. You know, if it was just, if it was just Misha being laid off and just miracle coming down with like, a disease that made me not be able to work or whatever again, right? The amount of empathy and grace and forgiveness on my loans and uh, sympathy from my community and Misha's community would be very limited compared to what it is now. Because we're all like, I don't know. <laughs> we're all like, I don't know, you know? And, and so we're all in the trenches together, but also we're in this like, this this opportunity to birth a new version of this world and and there are i mean I, we were we were buying groceries online and i think kellogg's bought morningstar i think t-mobile bought sprint so even like big 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 companies that should have survived this like they're already moving on they let it go you know and certain businesses are not going to be able to pivot and, and some of our jobs might become obsolete, you know, again, with, with Hollywood, like, I don't, I, you know, we're all optimists here, but like, I don't know what the hell that's going to look like. And same with theater being dark through the fall. Like, that's just, you know, and I, and I know we're all innovative, creative people and we will find a way out and we will be able to adapt. And, and, you know, all of us, I think can just do everything we can to weather the storm, to, to find a way to may, maybe be of service, to find a way to maybe share our gifts and to just really keep coming home and keep coming back to the stillness and, and not being afraid of it. And maybe trusting that like <clears throat> the answers are inside for everybody, you know? And, and I think there's, um, I don't know why I feel called to share this, but I'm going to, but anyone that does prayer wants to meditate using it. Uh, soup plantation, stop it. I can't, I know, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was like, I should have gone more, damn it. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> for anyone that prays or wants to use meditation as a way to kind of send energy out, which is a beautiful thing to do, to keep our vibe high and, and just like be the light like I talked about. I think there's real power and, and we are going to meditate, I promise. <laughs> um, there's real power coming together as a group, but there's also real power sending that light out and sending those well wishes out and sending that energy out and not to be like trite and say thoughts and prayers and use it in a, you know, whatever. But really, like if, you, if you're actually doing that, <laughs> if you're actually using the power of thought and the power of prayer and the power of meditation or whatever, however you wanna phrase it in your brain, um, there's real power there. And, you know, I talked to a healthcare worker before this went down and I was just so grateful for how she was helping our family. And I said, is there any way I can repay you? Like, what do nurses need? You know, what do healthcare workers, like flowers that feels stupid. It doesn't feel like enough. Do you want chocolate? You probably don't because you're a healthcare worker. So you know that like you shouldn't just eat a pound of C's candy like I would do. Like what do you, you know, what can I do? And she looked me dead in the eye and she said, do you really want to know? And I said, yeah. And she said, you can pray. And I was like, oh, you know, I was kind of taken aback. And she said, because whenever people are rising up to do the most good, inevitably there are forces trying to oppose us. And you know, whatever that means to her, whatever that meant of like physical people, like it's about the money or about, or like they won't give me the, the equipment I need or whatever, or just like energetically she, fee she feels, you know, this opposing force or just 
the challenges that life presents. You know, this is a this is a tall order to be the one saving people, <laughs> right? Or trying to convince them to, or like Diana, when she's on the call, you know, she's a doctor and she, people come in and they're freaking out at her, like, give me drugs, give me this. And she's like, you just need to go home and like, take a bath. And they're like, shut up, you know? <laughs> and it's like, no, that's what you need to do. Like, take care of yourself. So if you're one of those people carrying that light and trying to do good and, and on the front lines right now, like there, you must feel some kind of resistance for various reasons or people that like refuse to wear a mask. And it's like, why are you endangering them? Like you should care about yourself first of all, but why are you doing that to me? It feels like an affront to those people who show up every day to risk their lives, right? To take care of us. So we can have groceries so we can go, if we have to go to the hospital, like, so all that to say, if you want it, in your own private meditations or prayers or moments of thought, if you start to feel overwhelmed or guilty again, like I wasn't as productive, I didn't write the great American novel, I had two whole months, I didn't do anything with it, you know, whatever. If any of that noise comes in or you start falling in, and Courtney, I don't know if this would be helpful for your friend too, right? But like if we start going inwards and kind of falling down that rabbit hole, anything you can do to come out of that and come like keep connecting to your breath and then think bigger than yourself, right? Like, so it's about that service. And if you can't physically go out and serve, because some of us can't, right? Um, or if we don't have extra money to like donate somewhere, or food, or we can't make masks, or like do what you can, obviously, we all know this already. If nothing else, hold all these, these healthcare workers and, and, and drivers and grocery store people and everybody doing this and every, every, every company that actually does have the money to, to survive this, you know, we can send this energy and these wishes and these intentions and these hopes that they will not only do the right thing, but they will have whatever evolution needs to happen in their mind and heart so they have the courage to do the right thing. You know, or people that have these innovative tools that are gonna help us survive as a species to pivot with all of our businesses being online and certain things crumbling and, you know, just having to adapt that, that the people that have the right medicine or have the right uh, online platform or have the right policy, like that they get seen and heard, you know, by the people that matter, that, that, that it will be well received or that the nurses stay healthy or just, you guys know what I'm talking about? Just like send, we can put that energy out there and just, and then if nothing else, just say, thank you, you know, thank all of them, you know, and then give them all a big air hug, like everybody, every hospital you can think of, every you know, woman shelter, you know, they're, they're incredible things being done. And let's not forget, and I'm sure you guys all saw like some good news and John Krasinski and all these channels and, and these, um, you know, different platforms that are like really just focusing on the good stuff because there are people being unbelievably kind of generous and magical right now. You know, we gotta, there's a, oh my God, I wish I could, oh God, I feel like I'll just shut everything down if I try to do this. There's an amazing quote, I'm gonna put it on social media today. Uh, from Danielle Laporte, and she basically was saying, like, joy is an act of rebellion in a way, where it's like, because darkness feeds on itself, right? So it's like, if you're joy, that's you going, nope, I'm not doing this. I'm not going to go down this path. I'm going to look at the magic. I'm going to look for the people helping out. There's always people helping. I'm going to, I'm going to send my love and my energy and my gratitude to, to all that hospital. I'm going to think of that one right down the street from me, or that homeless shelter, or, you know, that Costco, or whatever, and just like, beams of like care bear stare right hands on hips out of your heart out of your belly care bear stare just send that love and that light and keep and just keep doing it you know and, and find your joy carve it out take learn how to tap dance for god's sake i mean 3d's off like i haven't tapped since i was four i hated every second of it but maybe i will now because my foot's not broken anymore you know like who cares we do have this gift of time and even if we're unemployed and which a lot of us are and having a hard time figuring out what that means and, you know, just ask for the help if and where and when you can, and then really come back to that, that place of trust of like, I am not in this alone. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. Nobody benefits by the entire country going bankrupt, by the way. Right? Like if, if all of us file for bankruptcy, like, I just don't, like, I don't know, you know, if we're all homeless, like, what is that? Like, what are you talking? Like, no, you know what I mean? Like, that's just, yeah, and there are people getting sick and dying, and there are people that are losing their homes, and there are people, you know, like, yeah, shit's happening for sure, and, and it might happen too, and already has to happen to us, but it's like, but we just, we got to soldier on, you know, we got to keep coming home, keep coming home, support each other, look out for each other, look for the 
look for the light, be the light and, and just hang on because I think on the other side, it's, it really, there's potential for such beauty, you guys, and such power. Um, and nurse in Tallahassee. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, sweet. Yeah. See, we're doing it. We're doing what we can, you guys. Okay. So we're going to meditate and in the meditation, I'll say what I was going to say about Gretchen's thing. <laughs> so since Courtney likes the music, we all like the music. Let me get my little magical phone. Um, does anyone want to share anything before we dive into that? Is, is everyone all right? I'm sorry. I feel like I talked for a long time. Oh, hi, Denise. Welcome. Hello. Um, okay. No, we're good. Good. Nothing in the chat. Ruby. All right. Um, <clears throat> let me turn on my trusty speaker. you know the drill? I don't think we have any newbies today, right? So everyone get situated, get comfy in your little chair. And I will keep an eye, Gretchen, so we can just leave anyone in the waiting room. If anyone's coming in this late, I doubt it. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Margie's ready to go. Christy's seated back. Uh, Gretchen and Christy, I can see you. Can I get a thumbs up if the, the balance is good between music and my voice? Yeah, cool. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, beautiful souls. Shoulders down and back. Eyes closed. Spine nice and long. Let the chair support you or the floor, the couch, wherever you are. And I want you to think about your chest opening up today, your heart expanding. So your neck is nice and long. Relax your jaw, your eyes are closed, unfurl your brow. Palms facing up in your lap to receive. So release the grip, release any clenching in your body, any fist that you're making. Feet are flat on the ground. And like that Care Bear stare we talked about, let your heart open, your belly be nice and full with your inhales and your exhales. Let's just settle in. So in through the nose, breathing all the way in, filling up with oxygen from the tips of your toes to the top of your head. And then when you exhale out of the mouth, making whatever noises you need to and you want to. One more inhale, breathing all the way in, 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 filling up with air. Your belly fills up, your chest rises. And then you exhale, your belly contracts, your chest falls, you soften even more, you relax even more. One more like that, breathing all the way in, full, full, deep breaths, filling it everywhere in your entire body like a balloon filling up. And then exhale, you start to float. So one more inhale, big, big, big breath, like a balloon just expanding, expanding, expanding. We're nice and we're tall and we're big and we're open. And then when the exhale, it's like our balloon takes off into the sky. And one more, just to make sure we get nice height with our balloon. Fill up again, all the way up. It's a big, beautiful balloon, whatever color you wanna be, whatever shape you wanna be. And then exhale, you fly even higher. And just feel yourself floating in the wind. Maybe it's just a nice breeze and you're hovering above your home. Maybe you're still inside the building. Either way, just imagine yourself fully relaxed and being held by your own structure, your own shape. 
it's just enough. The shape and the breath is all you need. And through the nose, out of the mouth, floating, being, existing. And just kind of float in your own happiness, float in your own peace, float in your own joy. And honor whatever you did or didn't do this week, knowing that it's more than enough. It's all the win because we woke up again today. We're still here. We found our way back to each other. We continue to find our way back to our breath. So from this floaty place, gently rocking side to side, Kind of just held in stillness. I was reminded by Gretchen to share that we are in this place of both, of all, all the things, all the feels, as our millennials like to say. <laughs> That's really what we're in right now. But we always have been. The struggle and the ease, the pain and the pleasure, the suffering and the beauty. Both and all have always been there and will always be there. But for a lot of us, this is new territory, having to experience all of it at the same time and witness others do the same. And the gift that we have is that we can come back to this floaty balloon and we can come back to our breath. And I'm going to show you where your heart lives. I'm going to show you where the stillness is always available to you. So sigh all the air out. Your balloon is still floating, but sigh all the air out. Bring your attention back to your breath. And then take a deep inhale once again, filling all the way up. And then exhale. And this time, inhale all the way up and notice the slightest pause before we exhale again. And at the bottom of the exhale, there's another little pause before we breathe in. This isn't even something we have to do or control, it just is. On our own natural breathing, we inhale. There's the slightest little moment and then we exhale. And then again at the bottom of the exhale, there's a pause and then we inhale. So continue to breathe and really pay attention. Find this pause, find this little moment of stillness, and steadiness. right in between and don't force it, just notice it. And what I want you to think about is the fact that you are that pause in between the inhale and the exhale. You are that moment of stillness and peace in between the exhale and the inhale. So the stuff of life, these waves crashing on the beach or the inhales coming in and all this goodness and this magic and the exhales of struggle and strife and uncertainty. 
the inhales of wealth and glory and health and friendship and the exhales of adventure and change. And life is constantly moving. That is what it is supposed to do. Nature is constantly evolving, changing, growing, expanding as is our human experience, as is our mind. We are constantly in motion with these inhales and these exhales. But the real truth is we are the pause in between. We are the still waters underneath the waves. We can exist in this place of equanimity of bothness of allness because the real us is love the real us is connected to everybody else the real us can handle more than we think we can come back to this love we can come back to this joy we can come back to this peace because we are the constant in between the inhale and the exhale The real you is constant and infinite love, joy, and peace. So for the next few breaths, I want you to really focus in here, really connect to that place, that centered place within, and just let everything else exist around you. And just breathe, knowing and trusting that it's all going to be okay because it was always going to be okay. We are in this together. We are stillness. We are love. We are joy. We are one. From that knowing, we can find our peace. So just trust and breathe. back to your body. Open your eyes whenever you're ready. Sorry about the internet tweak at the end. I don't know what that was. Way to stick with it, you guys. Um, Gretch, you want to unmute everybody? We went a little over, but if anyone wants to share. Great job floating. You all look so beautiful. That was great. 
<laughs> I'm glad. As always. <laughs> I'm glad. Thank you, everybody. Thank yeah, you, it's just always you. a great way to start this day, Miracle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.